My name is Marjorie Peranto with the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. Forsythias are easy to grow, but they do require some maintenance. Pruning is the most important chore. Forsythias have a naturally graceful arching growth habit, but they can be their own worst enemy. Left unpruned or pruned incorrectly, they will become too large, wild, and unruly. A neglected forsythia can overwhelm neighboring plants and surroundings and become unhealthy. By doing some maintenance pruning each year, you help keep the plant in bounds, assure good light penetration and air circulation, and reduce the likelihood of disease. Shrubs that bloom in the early spring, such as forsythia, are usually pruned just after they finish blooming. Forsythias start developing next year's flower buds in early summer. They carry them through the fall and winter to burst open in early spring. Flower buds are produced in clusters along the stems. If we prune a forsythia in the late winter while it is still dormant, flower buds are removed, reducing the upcoming spring flower display. Sometimes when the shrub is overgrown, has gangly branches, or has been neglected for years, its flower display is not what it could be. In this case, it's worth it to prune it when dormant and sacrifice a year of blossoms. When pruning a mature forsythia, each year start by selectively removing one-fourth of the oldest stems at ground level. These stems will have the largest basal diameter. As stems get thicker with age, they rub against one another in the interior of the shrub, causing wounds that weaken them and allow disease pathogens to enter. The oldest stems are also the tallest, so by removing them, you reduce the height of the shrub without changing its natural form. If you cannot get to the base of a large stem because the area is too congested, prune it back to within three or four inches of the ground. In some cases, you may purposefully choose to leave a foot or more of a large stem behind. This will encourage new shoots to develop from unseen buds embedded within the stem. Use a pair of loppers or a small fine-toothed handsaw for removing large stems. Next, thin out congested branches in the canopy. Thinning is done by cutting a branch back to its point of origin on a main stem. This method is the least conspicuous of all types of pruning and maintains the plant's natural growth habit. Thinning the canopy should be done with hand pruners or loppers, depending on branch diameter. Identify and remove any dead, damaged, or diseased wood that you find, branches that are growing inward toward the center of the plant, branches that are crossing or rubbing other branches, and some of the tallest, vigorously upright growing shoots. Make each cut at the point where a branch originates from another stem do not leave a stub. Resist the urge to shear off the top of your forsythia with hedge clippers. Shearing may be faster, but branches will respond by putting out excessive, dense, brushy growth at the stem tips. When you're finished, you will have a shrub with stems of various ages growing upward and outward, revealing the natural, fountain-like form of the plant. You should be able to toss a football easily through the shrub. The open habit will allow light and air into the center of the shrub, stimulating sturdy new flowering shoots to emerge from the crown and remaining stems for future years. For more information about pruning, visit the University of Maine Cooperative Extension's website.